Hi there, senior high school students! Welcome! This video is about pre-calculus for senior high school grade 11. Before we start, do not forget your pen and paper to write your solutions later on. And remember, you can always pause and play this video whenever necessary. So, are you ready? Let's start! You must have noticed that there are different types of shapes and curves occurring everywhere. Can you tell me which shape or curve this is? Yes, this is a circle. Now can you tell me what the shape of Earth's orbit is? Is this a circle? No, right? It is similar to a circle but elongated towards the side. And this shape is called an ellipse. Let's see if you can tell me the next one. Angel and Jay are playing a game of catch. Look at all these paths formed. Do you know what these types of curves are called? So this U-shaped curve is called a parabola. But not all U-shaped curves are parabolas. There is a property by which a parabola is defined. And we will see that in the next lessons. There is another curve that we will see. And it looks like this. It has two curves placed on either side of the axis. This curve is called a hyperbola. Interestingly, all these curves we just saw have just one thing in common. Can you guess what that is? They all come under a common category called conics. So what exactly does conics mean? It means conic sections. And conic sections mean taking cross sections of a cone. Let's see how to take a cross section of a cone. But before that, can you tell me what shape this is? Since it has two cones, and this line makes a right angle with the circular surfaces, this shape is called a double right circular cone. And this line makes a right angle with both the circular bases. Now let's see something interesting. When a plane intersects the shape, we obtain different curves. In how many ways can a plane intersect the shape here? One way could be horizontally. If a plane intersects the cone horizontally, that is at 90 degrees to this axis, we get a circle. Yes, this shape here is a circle. How else can this plane intersect the shape? What if we tilt this plane like this? We get an ellipse. If horizontal, then a circle. And if tilted a bit, then an ellipse. Now let's continue tilting it. If we tilt it even more like this, we get a parabola. And finally, if we tilt the plane like this, we get a hyperbola. So what can we conclude here? Depending on the angle at which the plane intersects the cone, we get different curves. But why are we studying these shapes or curves? Because we see these shapes in our daily life constantly in some form or the other. Let's have a look at each curve individually in our next lessons. Now let's understand a circle in detail. So what exactly is a circle? Or how is a circle formed? A circle is nothing but a collection of points. But can randomly placed points form a circle? No, right? So can you tell me how the points come together to form a circle? That's right! A set of points on the same plane which are at an equal distance from a single point form a circle. Yes, a set of points on the same plane at an equal distance from one single point. This single point is called the center of the circle. And this distance between the center and all the points is called the radius of the circle. Now let's see something interesting. Mathematics has a lot of branches such as geometry, Algebra, logic, number theory, etc. But for now, let's focus on geometry and algebra. 
Let's see how we can represent a circle in geometry as well as algebra. We all know that this is the geometrical representation of a circle. But do you know its algebraic representation? So the algebraic representation of any geometrical figure is called an equation. To find the algebraic representation of a circle, we need to find its equation. To find the equation of a circle, let's think of a few things. Let the center be O and its coordinates be H, comma K. Similarly, let P be any point on the circle with X, comma Y as its coordinates. Also, let's denote the radius by R. So the distance between points O and P is nothing but the radius. But how do we find the distance between the points O and P? Since we know the coordinates O and P, we can find the distance OP using the distance formula. So, we get this. By squaring both the sides, we get this. And this is the general equation of the circle. Now that we've seen the general equation of a circle, can you tell me the equation of a circle whose center lies on the origin? Since the center is the origin, the values of h and k becomes zero. Substituting these values in this equation, we get this. And solving it further, we get this. This is the equation of a circle with the origin as its center. So we already saw how to represent a circle in the geometrical form. Center O with coordinates as h, k, and radius r. We also saw how to represent it in the algebraic form through these two equations. And we will solve some examples based on it later. But before that, let us have a review on some basic formulas we will be needing. Now let's refresh our idea on the midpoint formula by asking ourselves, what is a midpoint? If you had an 8-inch burger, the midpoint would be the location where you would cut it in half to make two smaller 4-inch burger. Now we can extend this thinking to finding the midpoint of a line segment that connects two points. By finding the point that is directly in the middle of the line segment, such that it cuts it into two congruent halves. In this case, you have line segment JK, point M is directly in the middle, so that JM is one half, KM is the other half, and they are both congruent. Now we are going to be concerned with finding midpoints on the coordinate plane. So we want to think of a midpoint as a location with x, y coordinates, and our tool for finding a midpoint is going to be the midpoint formula. Now for distance formula, let's ask ourselves first, what is distance? We can think of distance as a length between a starting point and an ending point, just like a starting line and finish line in a 100 meter dash. When we use the GPS, we're looking at distances between a starting point and an ending point. Just like the drive from San Diego to San Francisco would be a distance of 502 miles. Now we are going to be concerned about finding the distance between two endpoints connected by a line segment. In this case, line segment CK. If we measure this line with the ruler, we would say that CK has a length of 13 centimeters. And we are going to extend this idea of finding distance between points on the coordinate plane. Please note that the distance is a measure of length. The words are interchangeable and distance is measured in units. Finally, when finding distances on the coordinate plane, our tool is not going to be a ruler but the distance formula. Before we go ahead and jump into some advanced questions involving the equation of a circle, I hope you have refreshed your ideas with the basics of the midpoint and distance formulas. So here we have circle S with a center at 1, 7. It passes through the point negative 5, negative 1, and we want to find the standard form equation. Now we can start by plotting the center at 1, 7 and the point in the circle at negative 5, negative 1. 
This should help us to visualize what this circle looks like and to help us understand that the distance between the two given points represents the radius of the circle. To find the standard form equation of a circle S, we need two pieces of info. That is the location of the center and the length of the radius. Now the center point was already given at 1 7, so we can go ahead and fill in those values. To find the length of the radius, let us use the distance formula. Given two points, let us write down the coordinates of those two points and then fill in the values for x sub 2 and x sub 1 and then y sub 2 and y sub 1. We can continue to evaluate here negative 5 minus 1 equals negative 6 and negative 1 minus 7 equals negative 8. Square both of those values, negative 6 squared equals 36 plus negative 8 squared equals 64. So 36 plus 64 equals 100. And finally, the square root of 100 equals 10. That is our radius, which we can go ahead and put right up into the formula and 10 squared equals 100. And now we have our standard equation of circle S. So we're told here that line segment AB is the diameter of circle P. And again, we want to find circle P's standard equation. Now let's visualize what this circle looks like. Let's start by plotting points A and B, A at negative 7, 5, and B at 3, negative 3, and constructing line segment AB. Since AB is a diameter, those are endpoints that are in the circle. And since this question is asking for the standard equation of the circle, we need to know the center of the circle and the length of its radius. We don't know the location of the center of the circle, but we know that the center of the circle will be directly in the middle of the diameter, such that it cuts it into two congruent halves, so we're going to use the midpoint formula to find the location of the center of circle P. So we're going to take the coordinates of points A and B and substitute the corresponding values into the midpoint formula. For x sub 1, x sub 2, and y sub 1, y sub 2. Now negative 7 plus 3 equals negative 4. 5 plus negative 3 equals positive 2. Then just cut those values in half to get the coordinates of the center of circle P at negative 2, positive 1. Now we can go ahead and throw those x and y coordinates right up into the equation. Remember that we have to change the sign so the double negative becomes positive. So on the left side in parentheses, we have x plus 2. Now for our final example, we are given circle P with a center at 6, negative 3. And we're also told that circle P is tangent to the y-axis. And again, we want to find the standard equation of that circle. Now let's create a diagram so that we can visualize what's going on here. So we have the center of the circle at 6, negative 3. And we know that it's tangent to the y-axis. Now the question is, what exactly does that mean? Now a tangent line hits a circle at one spot only one time. So if we think of our circle radiating out from point P, it's going to continue moving until it hits the tangent line and then we'll stop it because it only can hit it one time. And now we have a point that's on the circle at 0, negative 3. Since we want the equation of the circle, we need the location of the center and the length of the radius. Now the center we know is at 6, negative 3. That was given. So we can put those x and y values into the formula. Now remember that y minus negative 3 becomes y plus 3 inside the parenthesis. To find the length of the radius, we can simply count how many units the point in the tangent line is away from the center of circle P. In this case, 6 units, the length of our radius. So I'll go ahead and take that value of 6, put it right up into the formula, and of course 6 squared just equals 36, and now we have the equation of circle P. Now let us check your 10 item post assessment in your module 1. Number 1. A conic that consists of all points equidistant from a fixed point called the center. This is letter A, circle. For number two, 
the standard form of the equation of a circle, which is centered at the origin. This is letter C. X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. For number 3, the equation of a circle centered at 0, 0 and with the radius 10 units. The answer is letter B. Did you get the same answer? Here's the solution. How about number 4? The equation of a circle centered at negative 1, 5, and with radius 2. The answer is letter D. So we have substituted the values of the center H, K, and radius 2 to form the equation of a circle. Number 5. The coordinates of the center of a circle given by the equation x squared plus quantity y plus 3 squared is equal to 35. The answer is letter A. Here's how we got them. Did you get the same answer? Great! Number 6. The graph quantity x plus 3 squared plus quantity y minus 1 squared is equal to 16. By just looking at the equation, we can conclude that the coordinates of the center would be negative 3 and 1. Therefore, the answer is letter A. Number 7. The general form of the equation x squared plus quantity y minus 1 squared is equal to 2. Meaning to say, we need to expand this. And we will get this. Therefore, our answer will be letter C. Number 8. The center of the circle whose graph is given below. This is easy. This is letter B for negative 1. Number 9. The diameter of a circle given by the equation quantity x minus 5 squared plus quantity y minus 4 squared is equal to 100. Take note, we are looking for the diameter. By substituting the values, we will get positive 5 and positive 4 as the coordinates of our center, and 10 as our radius. But how about diameter? The diameter is twice the radius, meaning to say, they should be 20 units. And for the last number, here we need to find the equation of the curve that contains the possible location of the epicenter. Since the epicenter is 5 kilometers away from 0, negative 2, it could be any points of a circle with center 0, negative 2, and radius 5. Therefore, the equation is then x squared plus quantity y plus 2 squared is equal to 5 squared. So that's it! I hope you learned the context of circles. More to come, so stay tuned. See you in our next lessons.